Okay, we're going to find a comfortable seat to begin with. If you'd like to sit on a cushion or a block, you are very welcome to. So we're going to work into some solar plexus um, activation this morning. So the solar plexus is just below the two triangles of the ribs where the ribs meet together. And then there's a space just below it. And often, if you're feeling that there's got quite a lot of anxiety, when you gently press into the space, it can actually feel quite tender. So I suggest you start by doing this this morning, just taking your two middle fingers and just quite lightly pressing into the solar plexus space. And some days we do this and there's just an immediate effect and it's really tight and it's really tender. And other days it doesn't feel too bad. Um, and I quite like to give myself, if not a daily, at least a few times a week, just a little bit of a massage into the space just to release anxiety build up. Especially at this uh, point of history, there's so much going on <laughs> to cause anxiety. And a little bit of awareness and mindfulness of the anxiety effects on the body can really help to alleviate those effects. If we just walk around and we're constantly confused as to why we have tummy aches or why we have neck pain, we are not able to work at the source of these issues. We're just treating the symptoms and not really working into the source. So a little solar plexus massage can be quite alleviating. And after you do it for a little while, you might just start feeling like you've gotten through that first layer of fascia and now you're actually into that deeper muscle tissue. And this is where you might start to feel there is an effect of this massage. So it might become more tender. Just remember to be quite gentle with this. We're not trying to dig a hole into our abdomen, but rather just trying to work into that solar plexus space. And then once you've worked through that initial layer of fascia, then you can release one hand down and just make little circular movements with the remaining hand. So we're working into the muscle tissue below the rib cage. And this is the space where the diaphragm will connect into the outer body. And our diaphragm is a fairly hard-working muscle. It works every single time we breathe and we're completely unaware of it for the most part. So there's a lot of movement here, a lot of activation. And as you know, when you feel anxious, the breath changes and then this places extra stress into that diaphragm muscle just to work quite hard. And now take both fingers in again, and you're going to just try to slide the fingers almost underneath the rib cage. You can feel how they can kind of slip underneath the bone there. And just very gently work your way down the side of the ribs. So moving from that center line towards the floating ribs. And just notice what's happening in that space and then slowly working your way back up. And you can connect the breath here, so as you exhale, you gently press the fingers in. And that allows the release of the fascial tissue a little bit more to get those fingers just a little bit more in. And then again, bring one hand back to the knee, hand flat, and then just give the belly a little bit of a rub. That's warming, relaxing rub. So working into that upper abdomen. So this space is a little bit neglected in terms of our self-care. Often we're very focused on what's happening in the lower abdomen. This upper abdomen gets a little bit neglected. gently release from there. Now close your eyes, create your mind muscle connection to that space that we've been working in.
and breathing deeply into this area. So we are directly connecting to that, um, to the diaphragm just below the rib cage. Feeling the effects of that massage into the space. Should feel more aware of the area. Possibly feel like there's a bit more freedom, a bit more space. We've brought extra blood into that region with the massage. So there's a sense of warming. From here, you're going to make your way to lie down on your back. Hugging your knees into your chest and gently flattening through the spine. You're going to bring the knees into tabletop and the fingers up to the sky. Flatten through the lower back, take a nice inhale breath, and then exhale to lift the upper back off the mat, bringing the hands in line with the hip bones, flatten into the tummy. Let's exhale to release, bringing the head back down, inhale to lift, curling into the lower back just a little bit, releasing on your exhale breath. Let's inhale here, exhale to lift again. Holding here for a moment, keeping active through the core. Let's straighten one leg, bring it back, straighten the other leg, bring it back. Take the hands up as you lower the head down. Take a breath here, exhale to lift. Let's straighten the other leg first and bend. One more side and bend and then lowering back to the mat. Exhale to lift. Straightening one leg and bend. Other leg and bend and releasing down. I'm going to work into both arms and legs straightening. The head will stay on the floor. So again, flatten into the back. Let's straighten the arms behind you and the legs forward. And then coming back to center. Inhale and exhale to straighten. Inhale and exhale to straighten. Hold here, flatten your back and start to lower the legs just minutely. Really squeeze into the tummy and then draw the legs and hands back to tabletop. Hug your knees into the chest. Little gentle roll from side to side. And then coming to sit, so either roll to the side or rock a few times along the length of your spine and making your way up to sit in a cross leg position. On your inhale breath, float the hands to the sky, moving into dynamic twists. You're going to exhale, twist to one side, inhale, center, exhale, twist to the other side and inhale center flow with your breath
connect into that solar plexus area and feel how it warms up as you twist dynamically from side to side, using the breath to facilitate the movement. Inhale to center, and then exhale to forward fold. And as you forward fold, you want to relax your back, let your head and arms become heavy, but then start to suck the belly muscles in a little bit, creating some activation into that area. Inhale to roll yourself back up to sit and then switch the legs around. Take the hands back up to the sky. And then again, dynamic movement from one side to the other. Inhaling to lift and exhale to lower. Connect deeply to Ujjayi. Inhale to lift and then exhale to lower down. And again, engage into lower belly slightly and then start to lift into middle belly and then upper belly. And then inhaling to come back up. Let's roll over onto the shins now. And working into an ankle stretch while we're here. So you're gonna tuck your toes Sit into the heels, just rest the hands onto the thighs in front of you, you can take a mudra if you like, and we'll take a few short rounds of Kapalabhati breath, which is the forceful exhale breath, um, the inhale happens completely passively. So just gazing at the tip of your nose, or you can even close your eyes if you like. Take a nice big inhale breath, big exhale breath. Half breath in and begin. Exhale, chin to chest. And I'll suck that diaphragm in. And a release on your inhale. Let's bring the hands back to the mat. Move the knees back slightly and point the toes here. So the toes are, the top of the feet are flat against the mat. We're going to inhale, cow pose, dropping the hip, dropping the belly as you lift the hips and face. Exhale, cat pose, rounding into your back, squeeze the tummy muscles, stay in cat pose, float onto the tops of the feet, lifting the knees off the mat, and then exhale the knees back down. Let's inhale, cow, exhale, cat, inhale, knees up, exhale, knees down. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, knees up. And exhale, knees down. Inhale, cow. Hold your cow for a moment. Draw the shoulder blades tightly together. Puff the chest open and grip into the hands. Exhale, into cat pose 
and now push the hands away to slide the shoulder blades apart. Lengthening from crown to tailbone. Let's lift the knees off the mat, hold. Check your heels are behind the middle toes. No rolling of the ankles. And then gently releasing back down. Tuck the toes and lifting into downward facing dog. You're gonna heel toe the feet here. Stretching out the back of the hamstrings. So we've worked the feet open already. The toes are open. The tops and the bottom of the feet are fairly open. And that should give you a slightly different sensation of your first down dog than usual. Noticing how when the feet are open, the hamstrings have space to expand a little bit more. Sinking both heels to the floor as you lift open through the heart. Either walk hands to feet or feet to hands. Whichever feels better for you as you make your way into Ragdoll. Gently swaying from side to side with the knees bent. Head, neck and shoulders really heavy, pulling you down to the mat. Come into center, drop the hands, bend your knees deeply as you roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time. Make your way to the front of your mat into Tadasana. Engaging into the full body from heel to head. On the inhale breath, float the hands to the sky. Exhale the hands behind your back. Roll the shoulder blades open here, lifting the heart, lifting the throat slightly. And then exhale the forward fold with softened knees. Dropping hands to the floor, inhale, lift into a flat back. And then exhale for a second round of forward fold with the hands to the mat or the back of the legs. Inhale, stepping the right leg into lunge, sinking the hips low as you lift the chest high. Keeping the right hand to the floor, inhale the left arm up to the sky. Squeeze the inner belly and thigh towards one another. Find lightness here, so you're not sinking into the mat, but feeling lifted up to the sky. The top hand is now going to come all the way back, opening the chest a bit more, and then bring the hand to tuck in to your right hip, opening that heart center a little bit more. Be mindful not to let the front knee open wide, keep your foot flat. It's inhale, taking the hand back up, and exhale to the mat, stepping into plank. Floating in your plank pose, engage into the solar plexus. We're going to lower the right elbow, followed by the left elbow, into forearm plank. Engage those core muscles, and then making your way to sphinx pose by sinking the hips down and lifting the heart center up. Drag the elbows towards the rib cage and feel how that front body opens. From here, come back into your forearm plank by tucking the toes, lifting the hips, and then we'll place right hand followed by left hand into a regular plank. Now you're gonna round into your back, cat back, pushing into downward facing dog. Inhale to take the right leg to the sky. Let's exhale, knee to face, face to knee. Inhale, float the leg up. Exhale, knee to upper right arm. 
Inhale, up. And exhale to upper left arm. Inhale, up. Exhale the foot between the hands into lunge. Opening up through the heart. As you exhale, the back knee comes down. Inhale, hands into crescent. Finding space here into the hip flexors. Let's draw the hands together at the heart. We're going to inhale, turn to the right. Left hand forward, right hand back. Come to the center. And then opening to the left. Stay in your twist, turn your gaze forward, back hand to the thigh, front hand up to the sky. You're going to cartwheel the hands down either side of that front foot. Lift your back knee up, inhale, and then step together, flat back. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale the hands all the way up. Lifting tall through the lower back, let's bring the hands behind you. Rolling the shoulder blades together, opening up the heart. Exhale to forward fold. Let your head drip down, let your arms lift over the back. Then straighten or soften the knees. Release the hands to the floor, lifting halfway up, flat back. And then exhale to forward fold. Stepping your left leg into lunge. Straighten from heel to head. And then let's take the right hand up into easy twist. Getting as light as you can here. Reach the top fingers to the sky and then start to allow that arm to hang back a bit more. Working your hand into the front of your left hip. Opening the chest, keep the front foot flat. Inhale the hand over and down to the mat and make your way into plank. Let's take left elbow down, followed by right elbow into forearm plank. And then sinking the hips, lifting the heart into sphinx pose. Push the pubic bone into the floor and reach the toes away. Coming back into the forearm plank by tucking the toes, engaging into the lower belly. And then back into high plank, left hand followed by right hand. Working into a cat back, rounding your spine into downward facing dog. Let's take the left leg to the sky. Exhale, knee to face, face to knee. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, knee to upper left arm. Inhale, up. Exhale, knee to upper right arm. And inhale, up. Let's step the foot in between the hands into lunge. And then sinking the back knee down. Inhale the hands up into crescent, connecting into the thigh, the quads, lifting out of the lower back. Drawing hands together at the heart, we'll take it to the left side to begin, opening warrior two arms. Inhale to center and then opening to the other side. 
Turn the gaze to face forward, bringing the back hand down and reaching the left arm up. Cartwheel the hands down to the mat and stepping forward into flat back. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale the hands all the way up. Bringing your hands behind your back, interlocking fingers and rolling the shoulder blades together. Exhale to soften the knees as you forward fold. Let your head become a little bit heavier. Let your arms relax over the back body. And as you fold, suck in that uh, upper belly a little bit, creating some pressure into solar plexus. Release the hands to the floor, inhaling flat back. Exhale to forward fold, hands to the mat or the back of the legs. We're now gonna lift into chair pose, bending knees, reaching hands to the sky. And then bringing hands together at the heart. Lifting into the bundas, start to float your heels off the mat. Lift the heels a little bit higher and then start to sink your hips down. At the same time, lift the heels a little bit more. We're not gonna sit into the heels, but just get the hips quite low, so the lower belly lightly touches onto the thighs. From here, we come into forward fold, hands down, heels down. Stepping your right leg back into lunge. Let's drop the back knee down to the mat and inhale the hands to the sky. Lightly holding onto your right wrist. You're going to lean directly to the side. So not forward, but directly to the side. Start to push the right hip a bit more to the right and very gently pull that right arm so that you can feel the shoulder blade ext extending away from the ribs. Let's take us a bit deeper now by placing the left hand to the thigh and then creating torque. So you press into the thigh to bring the elbow to the outer edge of your front leg. Joining the palms together, lifting the top elbow so there's a straight line through those forearms. Keep sinking the back hip a little bit lower to work into the hip flexor. Taking this into a high lunge now by tucking the back toe and lifting the back knee. You can of course keep the back knee down if that's better for you. From here, release the hands to the floor and step your front leg up into a three-legged dog. Let's open up the hip to face the side, lifting those toes as high as you can. Opening into scorpion. Remember to keep your other three appendages in the regular down dog alignment. Let's square those hips off and then hug your knee to your face. Step the foot in between the hands and lifting into warrior two. Inhale, reclining warrior. And then cartwheel the hands to the mat, stepping into plank. 
Take a few breaths in your plank pose. We're going to lower forearm plank, right elbow, left elbow. Lowering the hips to the floor as you lift the chest into Sphinx. If you'd like to, you have the option of taking the elbows off the floor into seal. Lowering yourself back down, lifting the hips, tuck the toes, squeeze the thighs. Back into plank, right hand, left hand, and then rounding the back into downward facing dog. Get a walk, step, or hop yourself into flat back. And exhale to forward fold. Inhale the hands all the way up. Bring the hands behind your back, interlocking fingers, and roll the shoulder blades together. Lift open through the heart, reach the hands down towards the heels. Coming into forward fold, maybe you'd like to keep the legs straight this time. Your fascia might have relaxed enough to allow straight legs. If you're still feeling tight around the upper back and ribs, then soften the knees. Let's release the hands to the floor. Inhale, flat back. And exhale to forward fold. Bending the knees, reaching the hands up, chair pose. And then drawing the hands together at the heart. <clears throat> Start to lift up onto your toes, lifting your heels high. And we're gonna make our way towards toes squat this time. So you bring the heels to touch. You can bring the balls of the feet to touch as well if you've got that space. And then you slowly, slowly lower the hips as you lift your heels. And I mean go slow, as slow as you can. Coming down eventually to balance, opening the knees, lift your torso here. So you can always open the feet wider or bring them closer together, depending on what you're feeling in this posture. Let's take us into a bakasana now by placing the hands to the floor. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Gripping into forefinger and thumb, lift your knees up all the way to the armpits, bending into the elbows. Place the knees at the back of the triceps, reaching your head forward as you open up through the shoulder blades. You can stay here. Maybe you float one foot off the floor. Maybe you take both feet off the floor. When you're done, you're gonna come back into your toe balance. And we're gonna make our way to forward fold here. So heels down, hips up, adjust your alignment again, and forward fold. Stepping your left leg back into lunge. And dropping the back knee to the mat. Let's inhale the hands all the way up into crescent. So lift your torso straight to the sky. Try to avoid back bending here, rather lift straight up. You're going to lightly hold your left wrist and gently pull yourself to the side. So actively lift the shoulder blade out of the rib cage, and that's working into the teres majors and minors under the shoulder blade. Take this twist a bit deeper, right hand to the thigh, and then reach that left elbow over the thigh, using that space that you've created. 
bringing the palms together, one elbow to the sky, one elbow to the earth. You can stay with the back knee on the floor or you can lift the back knee up. Engaging into solar plexus to rotate. Let's exhale the hands down to the mat and taking the front foot up and back, three-legged dog. And open the hip to face the side as you lift the leg a little bit higher. Bending into that top knee into standing scorpion. And then squaring off, step the foot in between the hands, making your way into warrior two. Reclining warrior. And then cartwheeling the hands to the mat, step back into plank pose. Let's come down into forearm plank, left elbow, followed by right. Lowering the hips into Sphinx Pose as you lift the chest. You can stay in Sphinx or lift the elbows into Seal. And then gently release the elbows back down. Tuck the toes, lift the knees. Back into Plank, left hand, followed by right hand and then rounding the back like a cat as you move into Downward Facing Dog. Let's walk step or hop to sit on the mat. And bring your legs in front of you. Working into Navasana now. So just rock your hips from side to side so you come to sit onto the bones of the bum. Very important to make sure that you're not sitting into the sacrum, you don't want any rounding of the lower back here. You lift your spine up as tall as you possibly can, remembering that the skull lines up with the tailbone so we're not arching into the neck. Start to lean your torso back and feel as light as you can into the hip flexors. Engage into lower belly. You can stay holding onto the thighs if that's appropriate, or you can float your hands in front of you. You can keep the feet on the floor if that's appropriate, or float the legs up. Breathe into the space. From here, you're gonna to come to sit in a cross leg position. Remember which leg you have in front. Bring your hands next to your hips and then lift your hips off the floor, straight up to the sky. So you're not curling the hips forward or back, but lifting straight up. Relax your lower back and then come to sit second round of Navasana. So again, make sure that you're on the bones of the bum, not on the sacrum. And you can move through the various stages, holding to the thighs, releasing the thighs. You can lift the legs up. Maybe you need to re-hold here, that's fine. You can hold onto the lifted legs or you can float the legs forward. Sorry, float the hands forward. Make sure the front body feels as open as the back. One more breath. Let's come into the cross leg position with your other leg crossed in front. Hands next to the hips as you lift up. And 
and then gently releasing down. One last round of Navasana. So moving through any of the stages that feels good for you. And if you're ready, we're going to start to try to work this from a high Navasana into a low Navasana. So it's much easier if you hold on to the thighs. I'll show you with holding the thighs first. So from here, you're going to slowly lower down so that the lower back is on the mat and then you lift back up into your high Navasana. You can, of course, do this without the hands assisting by lowering down and then back up. So we'd like to do this about three to four times at your own pace. And then on the last time, you're gonna come all the way down to your back. So hold into your low boat for a second, maybe two seconds, maybe three, and then gently release all the way down to your back. Take your knees into your chest. And breathe here for a moment. On your inhale breath, bring the hands out into a T-shape and lift the legs straight up to the sky. Flatten into your lower back. And now we're going to bring the toes over towards your fingertips. Don't let them touch the floor and keep your opposite shoulder down. Inhale to lift back up over to the other side. Keep the shoulder down, feet floating, lifting up. So again, we're gonna go from side to side at your own pace you can move really quickly or you can move really slowly feel what your body is asking for about three times on each side and then back up to center taking us into cat pulling its tail let's cross the right thigh over the left the feet stay apart. You hold onto the feet now, so you're holding the baby to a side of the foot. Bend your knees, drop your bottom knee to the floor and the top leg to the left side. So the bottom thigh is going to be activated and then into the top leg we want to work the hamstrings and you can straighten the leg as much as makes sense for your body. We haven't done a lot of work into the hamstrings today, so you might feel that they are a little bit tighter than normal. And you do want your top shoulder to relax towards the earth as well. Let's come back to the center now, unwrap the legs. And then switching the legs around, bringing left leg over right, holding to the baby toe side of the foot. So that right knee drops down and the left leg twists over. Relaxing the shoulders towards the earth, gradually straightening that top leg as space becomes available. So cat pulling its tail is a twist with many different parts of the body having to get involved. Let's return to the center, take the knees into your chest. And now we've worked the abdominal muscles quite a bit. So let's work into a gentle releasing um, half bridge pose. And it's not necessarily about how deep we can get the back bend, but more about trying to extend the front body, especially working into this upper abdominal area. 
So you're going to curl the tailbone up to the sky, draw the shoulder blades tightly underneath the back body, maybe interlocking fingers if that space is available. And now as you breathe into the diaphragm, you're going to feel how it is already expanded. So the activation of lifting the ribs here means that the, the diaphragm expands. So it's quite challenging to now breathe into that space. But you're going to focus there nonetheless. Slowly work your way back down by opening the shoulder blades, making space for the body to come down. Take it into a restorative pose. Let's come into a second round now. And you can choose to stay in the exact same version of your half bridge pose. If the back feels comfortable there, if you feel like you want to go a bit deeper, a bit more space, you can lift the hands underneath the hip bones to lift a little bit higher. So remember, we're not sitting into those hands. We're using them as height markers to get the hips up and above. The elbows still draw in line with the shoulders. And again, focus on opening up that upper chest, the upper abdomen. And make your way down when you are ready into your restorative pose. And we have one more round of back bends here. So again, you can choose either variation of your half bridge pose, or if you know that your body is capable of coming into a wheel pose unassisted, that means that there's no one there to support you, then you are welcome to do it. If your body's not quite ready to come up unassisted, rather wait until the end of lockdown when we can all see each other again, and then I can help you lift up into your wheel pose. ready to come down, you tuck your chin to your chest, lowering onto the back of the skull, so not the top, but the back, rounding the shoulder blades all the way down, and everyone drawing knees into chest now. And just squeeze into that lower back release. Pasana, knees to chest, is one of the most simple postures we have in our yoga arsenal and it is one of the most effective as well. And you can choose to deepen this now by coming into a happy baby. If the hips feel uncomfortable or the inner thighs are not comfortable in this happy baby, just stay in your apasana. It really is very good for the lower back. Either way, you may want to roll gently from side to side, massaging into those lower back muscles, into the muscles either side of the spine. You can even press into the shoulder blades, getting an opening of the chest, an opening of the back. And let's draw the knees tightly in towards the body again. We're going to move into our final relaxation pose. So if you'd like to hold in a restorative pose for extra back release, that is a lovely option. Otherwise, if you're happy to come 
into your Shavasana. Then you're gonna straighten your legs to the corners of the mat. Make sure that you feel spread and open and supported. Often by the end of the practice, we're so ready just to flop and disengage that we don't get the best out of our Shavasana. So take the time to really set yourself into the best possible position. Take a few rounds of controlled breath to reconnect that space between body, mind and prana. Once you feel focused, and you don't feel like you're going to fall asleep, but rather you're going to stay aware of your relaxation process, and start to soften the breath to a more natural state. You can keep your internal dristi and the space between the eyebrows. Draw your awareness back into that solar plexus chakra. A lovely warm sensation there at the end of our vinyasa. Feel that warmth radiating throughout the whole body. Slowly start to deepen and lengthen your breath. Feeling your belly rise and fall. Gently running your thumb over each fingertip. Feeling the temperature and texture of your skin. Gently wiggling toes, ankles and wrists. Coming into a full body stretch, reaching the arms overhead as you point the toes down the neck. 
yawning or sighing, bending your knees and rolling over onto your side. Inhale, slowly lifting up into a seated position. And you can either join your hands together at a heart center in Anjali Mudra, or place the hands one on top of the other against your solar plexus chakra. The solar plexus is a place of confidence, of strength, place where we can challenge our fears, challenge our anxieties. And we'll close the class by chanting Om once and Shanti three times, taking a deep breath in. if they're on the solar plexus. Raising your hands to the third eye. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Lowering your hands to your lips, to your heart, and to your mat, bowing forward in recognition of your practice. Blinking, eyes open, inhaling, descent. Namaste.